Hi class, I thought I would go ahead and spotlight one portion of the PI if PMT practice assignment, specifically working with the if function. Uh, this, uh, this particular portion of the assignment deals with the if function as well as calculating a percentage which uses absolute cell referencing. And actually both calculations require absolute cell referencing. So again, as a reminder, any assignments I create will always have my instructions over here um, somewhere embedded within the worksheet. So I am familiar with the assignment so I'm just going to go ahead and, and go through this. Uh, hopefully you, you can use this as you're working through the assignment, either before or after, for additional reinforcement. So what we're looking at is we have a worksheet of people who basically work for me. All these different salespeople, Smith to Lee's, and it's just showing how much money they have uh, uh, created in total sales or how much they have made in total sales for my company. So I just want to use this worksheet to kind of tell me uh, what percentage of sales did Mr. Smith make versus Mr. Johnson, so on and so forth. And then based on um, how much total sales they have over here in this bonus parameters uh, table, I can decide if I want to give them a bonus. So if they made total sales that were are worth $7,500 or more, they're going to get a $500 bonus. And if they did less than $7,500, they would only get a $100 bonus. So the first thing is to calculate the percentage of sales. And to calculate percentage, it's always going to be the individual amount divided by the total amount. And you can see in this worksheet, I'll just zoom out a little bit, that I don't have the total amount. So the first thing I want to do is solve for the total sales. The easiest way to do this is using a sum function. So I can place my cursor in B12, and right up here on the home ribbon, I can use the sum function. So just go ahead and grab it, and Excel will automatically look above or to the left of wherever you place a function. If you just click, and it'll say, hey, are, are these all the right numbers I want to use, you as the human being should say, yes, those are the correct numbers. So I can go ahead and press enter on my keyboard, or if I click this check mark right up here, it will do the same thing as pressing enter, but it will also leave your cursor in that same cell location. So now what I can do is I can create the percentage of sales. I'm going to do this twice, and I'm going to make a mistake the first time to show you why absolute cell referencing is needed. So to calculate the percentage of sales, as I just said, it's going to be the individual amount, which in this case is the 7,662, divided by the total amount, which is the 57,000 down here. So to write a formula, the first thing I'm going to do is type the equal sign. I don't like to type in cell references. I actually like to click on them because I tend to make a lot of mistakes. So I can click on the individual amount, and I can say divided by the total amount. And I can go ahead and click that check mark, and there we go. And I have the percentage. It doesn't look like a percentage, so I actually have to format it as a percentage. And I know that I want it to be a percentage with one decimal place. You can see that right here in the instructions. So with my cursor on cell C4, I can click percentage, and then I can go ahead and increase the decimal by one. So awesome, I use cell referencing, B4 and B12, those are cell references, I never want to type in the actual numbers, and then I can use the fill handle to copy it down, oh no, I have a mistake, anytime something weird happens on your worksheet, something you don't expect or you get weird numbers, I always want you to just double click a cell, so in this case I'm going to go ahead and double click Mr. Anders, I want to see what's happening. And so I can see, all right, I have the top number, the individual, B6, but oh, look, I also have it being divided by B14, not B12. Because I used relative cell referencing when I just linked to the cells, when you use the fill handle, that will copy the formula or function. It will keep the math the same but it will increase the cell location or the reference. So Excel did what it was supposed to do. It increased the cell location. So it just kept increasing all the cells and moving their location. Well, in this case, I know that in this formula, I want B12 to always be B12. So I know that that is what becomes the absolute cell reference. So I can press Escape to get out of edit mode. Control Z, oops, Control Z undo twice, I, one of those was the zoom feature. And I know that I need to make B12 the absolute cell reference. Okay, so the, the easiest way to do that is you can come right up here to the formula bar, 
If I double click this cell, I can go into edit mode. Either of those work. I can place my cursor in front, in the middle, or behind. It doesn't matter. And I can press the F4 key on my keyboard. Oops. Now I have a laptop, so what just happened there was I pressed F4, but I activated a different function. So if you have a laptop, you're going to look for a special key on your keyboard because most of the times those function keys have dual purpose. And so I, pre I have a button called FN on my keyboard, and I press that and the function 4 key at the same time, and then I get that absolute cell reference. Of course, you can always manually type in the dollar signs. It works the same way. Go ahead and click the check mark. And then I can use my fill handle. Hey, that looks a lot better. And if I double click Mr. Anders, I can see that the B6 cell reference incremented, but the B12 remained the same. I can press escape to get out of edit mode. So the big clue here is you always want to use an absolute cell reference when you're linking to information that exists in one place and one place only. So in this case, the total amount only exists in one place on the worksheet. If you type in B4 divided by B12, and then B5 divided by B12, and then B6 divided by B12, and so on and so forth, if you're typing the same formula over and over again, that should be another clue that you're not doing it correctly. You should type it one time and copy it many times. So you definitely want to use that absolute cell reference. All right, going on to the bonus. To calculate the bonus, you are going to use an if function. So, and I know that because I'm giving you a hint right here. Hint, if, if the salesperson has a total sales of $7,500 or more, they get a $500 bonus. Otherwise, they get a $100 bonus. So right there, that part of the statement, that is telling you that I'm going to use an if function. So I'm going to go ahead and place my cursor in D4 click the insert function and I have if right here because I've used it before so I'm just going to go ahead and double click it and that's going to go ahead and open up the function dialog box and there are three parts to the if function the logical test which is what I'm determining if what if their total sales in this case are either more than 7500 or less than 7500 if that's true so let's go with the more than 7500 if they made $7500 or 7501 or 7502 they're gonna get $500 if that's true that's how much money they get otherwise they get a hundred dollars Okay, one of the things a lot of students do is when they write the logical test, they test for a range of cells. And when with an if function, you only want to test one cell at a time. So in this case, I'm going to create the if function for Mr. Smith. I'm going to write it for Mr. Smith over here, and then I'm going to copy it down. So my logical test is if the total sales, so I know this cell, B4, is total sales, is greater than, so I have to use the greater than symbol, and I also want to make sure I test for 7500. So I also want to type in an equal. So if it's 7500, if it's greater than or equal to 7500. So what I'm doing is that I'm testing the cell B4 against 7500. And you can see, I actually it says true here, which it should because Mr. Smith made 7662. So that's bigger than 7500. If that's true, they're going to get $500. I could type 500 in here, but I actually want to reference it in the worksheet. And I'm going to show you why. Because it exists right here in cell G4, I can actually click on it in G4. And if the, so that's the true value. If it's less than 7,500, then they're going to get $100. So that's the value of false. Now I'm going to make a mistake here again, and then I'm going to come back and correct it. So I'm going to click OK. Hey, they got 500. I can format it money style, right? And then I can go ahead and use my fill handle. Oh no, something happened. Something weird happened. This doesn't make sense, so I'm going to double click it. Oh, and I can trace what Excel is doing. So it's doing, it's using relative cell referencing right here. It's saying, all right, if B6, so that's Mr. Anders, is greater than or equal to 7,500. If that's true, they're going to get what's in G6, which is nothing and in G7, which is nothing. Well, that's because of relative cell referencing. It moved those cell locations down. Escape. 
control Z. So you're probably figuring out what's going to happen right now. So here's another little trick I like. I'm going to place my cursor right here on D4. If I click the FX button, it'll open up that dialog box with all that data already displayed. And now I can go ahead and I can just do an F4 on G4 and an F4 on G5. There we go. Click OK. Use my fill handle. By the way, I double clicked right there. Another little trick. It'll automatically take it to the bottom. And lo and behold, there we go. It went ahead and filled it all in. And so you might be saying, well, why couldn't I just type in the 500 and 100? The reason being is if I want to come back into this worksheet and say, all right, I own this company, but I don't want to give them a $500 bonus. I need to save some money. I'm going to give them 400 press enter, you will see all the corresponding values change. Okay, so again, that's that what if power of the worksheet of Excel. So hopefully that clarified uh, how to calculate a percentage, why you would use absolute cell referencing, and also kind of spotlighted how the if function works. So hopefully this will help you with completing this assignment, and thank you for watching.